Well, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the December short sale supergroup leader December presentation. This is Santa Claus from the North Pole stepping in for David Randolph, the supergroup leader. And uh, we're going to do our December short sale supergroup presentation. Um, so welcome aboard. Throw any questions into the chat box uh, on there or the question box. Um, if you think I look funny, that's okay because it's a Zoom and you don't know where I really live, but I am from the North Pole. So anyway, I'm going to do a presentation tonight on the status of the market with short sales. I actually like to throw in a little bit of uh, what I call uh, economic status of the country in relation to real estate. So it's not just about short sales. It'll also be about rehabbing, rentals, um, some stuff, a little bit of uh, where things are going in 2022. And so uh, you'll wanna watch this presentation several times with it. Um, there'll also be uh, um, all of these links to these articles. Um, if you text the word short to me, I can send those to you. Um, and uh, yeah, very good, ho, ho, ho. Uh, I wish I could do that better. Uh, but, you know, David Randolph, Rudolph, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, people say that to me only in the month of December. But um, I will have um, all these websites you're about to see um, on a Microsoft Word file. If you text the word short to me, I can email that to you. Uh, the phone number is 636-685-2990. I'll throw that in the chat box. On it, just uh, text short, and because uh, otherwise you're not going to be able to see, uh, you know, all of the uh, what do you call it, the URLs on the screen. It's just going to be too small uh, and everything. So uh, to get the URL. And we're also going to uh, listen to a recorded live um, call um, tonight uh, with a seller. Um, so I thought I'd take something out of uh, what you see on the screen right now is my uh, private membership Facebook group. And we do, um, we go through recordings of seller calls, bank calls. I'm gonna play one of those for you tonight. You'll find it super interesting. Uh, with it. So uh, first, I'm going to run through some market update for about 20 minutes. Uh, good time to go to the bathroom and come back. Uh, then I'm going to do some live questions, throw them in the chat box. Um, and then I'm going to do uh, a recorded live call uh, with a seller. So you can actually hear what you say to them under this certain situation. So uh, hang on and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm actually playing this recording that I did uh, for my uh, monthly membership group. Um, so I'm not actually speaking. I'm going to be sitting here watching me from my recording last night uh, with it. Um, so uh, are there any questions in the chat box? And let's go ahead and get started. We only get uh, about one hour um, in the REI USA group, though we could go longer probably, but it is Christmas. Hope you all are doing well. So uh, let's go ahead and get this show on the road here. Um, you know, that's there's good information in here uh, for those that are new, um, you know, if you go here to the guides, okay? And so we're always kind of adding stuff to the guides on here. Um, this guide three is important because it gives you some links. There's things on here, CFPB rules. Um, we got stuff about how to find the um, FHA map. We've got stuff on here about resources for the Fannie Mae lookup tool. Uh, so you can find out if it's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or if it's uh, FHA. Um, so we'll go with that. Let's go ahead and move on, though, to uh, the, I'm going to do a quick market update. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time for that. So I've got, uh, I've got all this here in the Microsoft Word file. Okay. And, um, okay. will, um, you know, that will be posted in the Facebook group um, or on the, and also on the 
Kajabi, Short Sale Profits Group. So you don't have to try to write all these websites down. Uh, so they'll all be in this file here with it. So you can get access you know, to all of them. Um, I got a few short notes um, on here with it. Um, let's see here. So let's go ahead and get that off of there. Okay. Is that so Don, you're monitoring anybody having trouble getting on, right? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I want to give an update on the market um, in a little bit of a kind of a year end market. Um, uh, George Odeguero was asking about doing a Christmas party and that was a good idea. But uh, if we did the Christmas party, it would have to be in January because I don't think we could get it uh, organized uh, well enough and stuff like that. But um, oh, okay, Bruce says the presentation was earlier today because this was the 20th. Okay, I see the question. Uh, with it. So um, yeah, so Bruce, let's see if we can find out if that's actually available online. You might have to have a login ID and password and be a member. Um, but uh, we'll check into that. Maybe Bruce can see if that presentation is available online. But I'm going to guess you have to be um, a, a member. Maybe it's not very expensive, but definitely look into that. So anyway, um, I want to do a quick market update. I want to do a little bit about too where we are in the state of the economy. Uh, with rehabs and things like that, because there's some stuff out there in the media that's not right. And uh, some of the data that I use is um, a little bit advanced. It's a forward looking three to six months. And so, you know, I can, I won't have time to show you, but I'll give you this resource tonight uh, for you to go and look it up. And so we'll kind of go through that. Um, first thing I want to do is talk about the unemployment rate, because that's really something really important, you know, that we're looking at. And so here, uh, what, and so I'm not going to read these articles to you. I'm just going to point out the highlights and then we move on to the next article. But this is the unemployment rate. This is the uh, government department of labor.gov report. Um, and so this is um, for December the 7th. Um, and so we're always looking at the number of continued weeks claimed for benefits. You know, it's not how many applied this month, this week or next week. It's how many are in are continuing to have the long term unemployment. Okay, and so for the week ending November 27th, uh, the number of that people was almost two and a half million people, uh, half a million increase from the previous week. Uh, that's not good, not good at all, because, you know, that just simply means that, um, you know, there are more people reaching that continuous state. In other words, you know, they may have applied for unemployment, and that number varies weekly, it can go up and down, and people make a big deal out of it, but it's not really that. It's how many people stay in that status till they Kind of hit that. I don't remember if it's four weeks, eight weeks, or twelve weeks again, um, but five half a million people hit that, uh, you know, continued week claim status, uh, and that's a huge increase. And you didn't really hear about that in the in the news media, but that's what's driving you know the short sales, right? You know, it's it's a function of one, you missed a payment, two, you can't sell your house because you won't pay off your loan, and three, uh, if you have no job, then you can't modify your loan. Those are all three nails in the coffin for people. Um, so that's an important one to watch. Um, next thing here I'm going to look at, um, let's see, is uh, the, uh, yeah, so this is the, uh, so there's surveys they do. It's a household survey. There's a business survey. Uh, and this is uh, also done by the government. So this is the uh, uh, Department of Labor. Um, actually, I guess I didn't go to Department of, this is just the summary of it here. Uh, but basically, the um, Department of Labor, um, well, so the results come out of this, uh, the government statistics. Uh, the payroll survey said that there's 3.9 million fewer jobs than there was in February 2020. So in other words, between pre-pandemic and today, where is this economy at? What has changed? And there are still 3.9 million fewer jobs. I don't know if anybody out there knows what the unemployment rate is but it's dropped dramatically, but it's false, it's misleading. It makes it look like things are good, okay? Because the participation rate is not there, okay? You know, people are, don't even, aren't even trying to try to apply for a job. And so you've got, you know, here, you know, 3.9 million fewer jobs than there was pre-pandemic. And what really bothers me about that aspect is a couple months ago, they stopped unemployment. So there's only like two states left still paying unemployment. 
So you would think, you know, if you were a real deadbeat, that you would have got your butt back to work. Okay, but yet there's still, um, you know, a high unemployment rate, half a million more people, you know, just joined the long term unemployed with it. And, and one reason here is a lot of jobs did not come back. You know, Amazon's cranking it out, right? Okay, the middle class or not middle class, but the middle management and upper level management, they're, you know, they're doing great, uh, but not, you know, the people that can't afford their mortgage. You know, I don't usually do short sales on half million, one million, million and a half dollar homes. I do short sales on homes, you know, under 300,000, which is the FHA limit for those in the East Coast and West Coast. It's under 800,000 for you with it and stuff. So, uh, so we still have a situation there. Um, now I want to switch over a little bit to where is the current economy for homes going, the real estate market. Okay, so, you know, some people always say to me, well, yeah, uh, sh I might be able to get a house for $25,000 like Edward, okay, here in St. Louis. Um, but, you know, what am I going to be able to sell it for if the market's dropping, right? Now, I'll make that argument at $25,000. I don't care what the market's doing, right? You can sell it for, you know, two hundred dollars instead of two fifty dollars that it's worth. But, you know, you still kind of look at where is the market going. Uh, and so here's um, a forecast that they came out with. So this is year over year, basically 18% year over year rise in home prices. And I'm pointing this out, you know, for, you know, basically, um, you know, uh, for the rehabbers that are out there, you know, with this, okay? So I'm kind of pointing this out for the rehabber, you know, because uh, if home prices are rising, so it takes you one month, two months, five months, six months to finish your rehab. Well, if homes are going up 9% in that six months, uh, that's, you know, that's really good uh, and everything. So, um, you know, so, um, you know, so that's just something to keep in mind now. However, you know, look at what they're talking about here, uh, you know, with um, year over year projected for next year. Um, you know, they're only talking about two and a half percent rise. Okay, now I think that that's um, good, actually, and I'll show you why. I got more graphs to show you, but this is a forecast by, you know, um, core logic, and they've got a lot of money to spend all this on this kind of thing uh, with it. Um, but prices kind of rose up, and, and now that just simply means that they're staying flat and going up slightly. Uh, that's you know kind of what they're they're forecasting. But let's go to the, the next one here that we're looking at. So these are the top ten markets uh, for price growth uh, in uh, 2022. Okay, so these are the projected price growth. And so that's this column right here. Okay, so whoops, it's not, I can't highlight it. So this vertical column on the far right hand side, the top 10. So you got, you know, Salt Lake at the highest at eight and a half. Um, you know, you've got um, Tampa, I don't know, uh, if some of my uh, Florida people are on here uh, with it. Um, if uh, Samuel's on here, but, uh, you know, Tampa's uh, got the, one of the highest price, you know, areas. Uh, with it. Um, but that's not a big giant increase. This is not a, you know, bubble that, you know, explodes, okay? You know, uh, one year of 18% now it might sound um, dramatic, but if it only goes up this much and this is the top 10, you know, then then you got a pretty good, you know, steady market uh, with it. And I'll show you some more data on that uh, with it. And these are all articles you can go back and read. Um, and stuff. You know, I'm going to make the point, though, um, you know, that um, that basically, you know, you got to kind of look at some historical data. Um, shoot, okay, I can't do that. Or oh, this one here. Um, go back. Where is this one? Let's see if that's good. I'm looking for another graph. I can only kind of show one on the screen. Let's try this one. Okay, you know, I don't see where my graph is. Um, okay, well, I'll get to that. So anyway, back to here. Um, okay, so now this here, um, you know, is, this is basically um, Altos Research. Um, and this here, so for my Arnie Newton and George Vertigo and Carl, if you're on here, all my rehabbers, and I know I've missed a few, 
rehabbers. You guys need to get in this weekly podcast. I'm going to play just about five minutes of this because I think it's that good with it and stuff. Um, but, you know, this guy is the one that's looking at the data today, projecting out three to six months. When you go to CoreLogic and those other big companies, they're all looking at, and, and Realtor.com and, and NAR, they're all looking at historical data um, and reporting to you what's happened over the past two or three months. Um, this guy takes data on a daily basis, publishes it weekly. Um, and so um, it's, it's real time active data and he's got many years of experience. And so, you know, one of the things that, that he's looking at, um, you know, is, and I can go back to here and show you where that, uh, well, I can, I'll get to that um, basically, but basically, um, you know, normally over, um, you know, November and December and Christmas, you know, uh, things really slow down. Okay, well, what's actually happened is only 16% of the nation slowed down in activity uh, you know, during this uh, November, December timeframe. That's un highly unusual, okay? Uh, and so one of the things, as you know, from a previous couple months ago recording, one of the big factors I said you should look at is, um, you know, the, num the number of months of inventory. If there's no houses for sale, there's no bubble, guys. It just can't happen. It's physically impossible. There's nothing to bust, you know, kind of thing. So, um, and so, you know, when people are fighting for houses, you know, um, now if, if demand changes, what happens? Days on market goes up. So that's, that's your indicator, your canary <clears throat> that you want to look at uh, on it uh, and everything. So that's kind of, kind of what you want to look for um, on there. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to play a little excerpt here because he's going to talk about uh, inventory. So, so right now to show you what you see on the screen, this is, this is 2015. And then, and then 2021. This is our inventory for the past five years, guys. Do you see that? Okay, a steady, steady downtrend. Then pandemic hit, and things just totally tanked. Um, now, if you know things are going to take back off, you know, and go up. Well, you know, they're going down, but that's normal. Um, but listen to what he has to say about what's coming up in in November, in December, and January. When we look at the forecast. Here's what we can see. Each line on this chart is a year. And you can see that it declined just a little bit more in January before rising, typically peaks right at the beginning of January with the most new listings in the second quarter. And then we see it starts to fall, decline for the second half of the year. You can see this year is the thick line at the bottom, the red line. And we had a normal curve this year. We just have significantly fewer homes on the market. We, we went through the pandemic, everything came out of the, you know, all of the, the demand just, just spiked up. And so we have that, the lighter red line where, where inventory declined all year last year. Now we have a normal curve. And so we can see the forecast of the rest of the year and into January. Um, and what we can see right now is that we will start January below that record low point of April 30th this year and probably decline a little bit more in January so that we're going to start the year with record lows. And it's going to be very difficult for us to have uh, anywhere near the normal levels of inventory for 2022. What that means is we can already see in the data that supply is restricted for all of the the whole year um, we talked about rising rates if rates rise we can see uh in the data where for example the last time rates mortgage rates rose was 2018 and you can see inventory build a little bit that year uh, in this case here 2018 i want to pause it for a second because um, there's a lot of, uh, this is a uh, pretty long uh, uh, presentation and it covers a lot of points. He addresses what happens if interest rates rise, okay? Um, and everybody knows what happens if rates lower, but what if rates rise? And that's you know, where he was pointing out in 2018, okay, that, um, that you know, it basically had a slight increase um, in inventory, but, you know, rates rising one percentage point doesn't greatly affect the market. 
very much. And that's exactly what happened back in uh, 2018, which I think was that, uh, that yellow line up here, 2018 yellow line, markets went up uh, and stuff. And so uh, that's something else he addresses. So this whole, um, uh, this link is in the Word file and you can listen to this, this whole presentation. There's so many more good parts, but I just wanna point out inventory because that's your key factor in everything. It is the, the yellow line. And you can see the yellow line started off on the left side of the chart here, uh, pretty low. And then inventory grew through the year and it's and it finished a little higher than the other previous years. And you can see like that's the difference of mortgage rates rising by a full point in 2018. And so you can see we can, we could shift up the the inventory, but it's not a spike. It's not a it's not a, a drastic change. It's like a little bit of change that we could see at that time. That's what we're in for for 2022. We're already in that case. Um, and one of the leading signals, therefore, is that no matter what happens in um, with rates, with the, the rest of the market, there's very little opportunity for a lot of inventory to build. Um, this is the... Okay, so anyway, I just want to point that out because he kind of said it better than you know, better than I could, and it's his data anyway. I will point out uh, that, you know, we started in January of last year with over 400,000, um, and then we came down, you know, into the 300,000 range here. This was this crazy, crazy time, you know, in 2021 uh, with it, and then we had the normal increase like you would have coming into the fall. We always have. The, the thing that, that happened is that the market came back down like it does, but at the projection of where they're at now, we're going to actually end up uh, with um, less inventory than we had last year. So we're going to be starting this year in worse shape than we were before. We had 400,000 homes in January 21. We're going to start with 300,000 this year. So for all my rehabbers, build away, okay? Buy them houses, rehab them, get them on the market you know, as fast as you can with it and stuff. So uh, anyway, that link will be in there. Um, here, this article here, uh, let me see uh, my notes over here, what I said about this. Um, and then, like I said, you know, uh, he did a survey of some realtors, only 16% of these realtors across the nation saw any decrease in uh, their activity. And they actually are seeing um, an increase of home prices in December. That's never happened during Christmas before ever, okay? Home prices don't go up at Christmas because everybody's Christmas shopping. Well, what's happened is um, people are, realtors are telling their buyers, hey, look, you know, there are no buyers out there right now. If you want to buy a house, you better get your butt out there and buy, okay? Because in the spring, there's five, 10 times as many buyers with it. And so they, they're thinking they can go buy a house during Christmas without competition, well, all it's doing is driving up the prices uh, here with it. So, I mean, looking at here, you know, we've got a 23.4% year over year uh, increase, okay? Um, and so, you know, we've got basically a lot um, more price action in these months that were supposed to cool off, okay? So that's crazy. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's it on the market uh, for rehabbing. Let's get back to the short sale side of things. Uh, and stuff. And like I said in here, you need to get us a, a, a nice spot on the sofa and listen to that guy's uh, presentation uh, and stuff. You know, even if rates rise, it's not going to affect the market very much. Um, I got notes here. There's no possibility uh, for the climb in this market over the next six months uh, based on the data. And here's how he does that. He looks at listing prices and percent um, drops in the listing prices. So he's forward looking not looking you know, retroactively with that. Um, let's see. Uh, selling, okay, I got, I got a bunch more notes. I'm not gonna read them. They'll be on the Facebook group. Um, so yeah, year over year, we've got a, um, a uh, increase in prices. Um, so let's see this one here. Um, what was this about jobs? Net change in employment. Oh, I think actually what this was was um, the uh, actual. Um, 
Let me check here. Yeah, so what this was, uh, that was actually that Department of Labor file that we had. Um, okay. So there, um, so yeah, that was the actual Department of Labor file. I already went through the summary of it. Uh, with it, let's jump over to here. Okay. So now, um, so if you remember, um, I posted a thing that um, that forbearance ended July 31st in August. Uh, there was a huge 30% increase in foreclosures. In September, there was another 24% uh, increase in foreclosures. But in October and November, it is actually um, declined. It's actually gone back down. Okay, so my notes here without going through this whole article, okay, um, which is kind of hard to read. I don't know if I can expand it, but basically my notes here are talking about, you know, that there's a total of 19,000 properties uh, with foreclosure filings in November. Okay, now keep in mind, how many were there in September? 1.4 million, okay, uh, homes. 19,000 properties went under a foreclosure filing in November. Um, that's down 5% uh, from October, but it's also up 100% from year over year, okay? So that, you know, there's an initial surge, uh, but then now the banks are basically plateauing off. And you know, I think one of the reasons for that is because they don't have the staff and the manpower to foreclose on people with it. Um, you know, they, you, you, you just need people to do that. You've got to follow certain CFPB rules, which is contact the homeowner a certain number of times at a certain time of the day. You know, there's these things. And so they're kind of, I think, letting them just hang in limbo, you know, out there with it. So, um, so I think that's something interesting. Now, that kind of data is in this Black Knight Mortgage Monitor. And normally I go through this, but I'm gonna skip it for tonight because uh, it's already so late uh, with it. Um, you know, you can go back and you can look at this and read through it, but you know, we're down to 3.74% uh, delinquencies. Um, and what's happened is, let's see here. Let me take this back up to the top move this out of the way so I can see everything. Um, what do you want to go back here and you want to look for, okay, is, um, you know, the number of people that have been leaving the forbearance, okay, um, and then what's happening to them. Yeah, so the forbearance volume decreased, okay, we're down to 3.1%. Um, so the first wave of foreclosures um, in September, um, but there's still 1 million people in forbearance. So they have only tried to process through 400,000 people. Um, out of those, 53% um, are still being resolved. So out of that 400, so basically 200,000 people out of 400,000 managed to either refinance, pay off their loan, um, or catch up or some manner of that. Uh, the other half, the banks are trying to work something out. One million of them are actually still in the forbearance. And, and that's good for you in a way because you know you can't handle all of them if they did come out. But you know this is that big PDF file, very important to read through uh, and stuff on here. I'm not gonna do because we don't have time you know, to do that. So, um, so basically I wanna kind of go ahead and pause here um, and uh, you know, ask if anybody's got any questions about what I just presented, um, and then we'll move in to uh, open Q&A uh, questions from people. Um, I've got some people that have texted me uh, some things with it. Um, and so, uh, you know, and then Don, let me know if somebody's got any questions in the chat box too, because I, I can't chew gum and talk at the same time very easily. So just kind of point something out uh, in there. Um, and, uh, I got uh, some questions that came in. So is, is Reese Woods on here, by the way? Don, see if you can see if Reese made it on. Yes. He is. Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Um, so, let, so Reese, let me first uh, ask people questions about the, the research data, and then we can go ahead and answer uh, a couple of your series of questions. It was easier to try and just do it live than to text you stuff. So let's first open it up here for questions about the market data. Um, anybody just go ahead and unmute yourself ask a question, throw it in the chat box, um, you know, and I'll watch for the chat box too. 
Um, any questions about the market data? Okay, no questions. Okay, so hopefully maybe that was a thorough explanation of where the market is. Um, okay, so anyway, um, if there's no questions on the market data, um, Reese, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself and um, go ahead and ask some of your questions that we talked about earlier today. Okay. Um, so for the condo, since um, the, um, the condo fees are in default, we're going to have to do two um, AT, ATRs. Yes. And um, okay. And um, the mortgage isn't behind, but do they need to stop making a payment on that, or is the condo fees enough to qualify? Okay, to... so yeah, so let me give a little background on that um, for the rest of the group. Um, so Reese is working on a short sale, potential short sale, still trying to decide if he wants to take it on or not. Um, you'll see this occasionally, and you're going to see it much more often because of forbearance. So when people lost their jobs, um, they could go into forbearance, but nobody sent that memo uh, to the HOAs, right? The homeowners associations. And so a lot of people have now built up a past due HOA bill. Um, and so some of these HOAs are actually getting smart and foreclosing. Some places they call it a share of sale, some places they call it um, foreclosing, but you need to understand that it's real and it actually forces the homeowner out of the house. Now, I'm not saying that the HOA is going to actually make them leave the home because then you, know, you kind of have to be responsible for the utilities and certain things like that and what happens to the house. But yeah, you know, it's almost like a second lien type position. Um, the HOA will foreclose. They will own the house. Uh, and so theoretically, they could start um, renting it out and collecting rent. You know, I don't think the HOAs have gotten that smart to figure that out yet, but you know, they might be able to potentially do that because they are the legal owner of the house. The mortgage stays in place. So if the HOA sells the home, they must pay off the first mortgage, okay, uh, and stuff like that. So just be aware of that. We've had that, uh, you know, uh, in Texas, uh, you know, with one of my students. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it was, uh, I think it was something like uh, maybe just only a twelve or $15,000 HOA and somebody paid, um, I think, $55,000 for that HOA, okay, um, because the value of the home was so high. Uh, they paid $55,000 for a $15,000, you know, um, HOA bill, um, but now they own the home instead of HOA, uh, and so now they can, um, you know, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so Stephen asked, will the homeowner still be liable uh, for the late HOA fees. No, they really actually won't because the way most subdivision covenants are written is that it's tied to the home. That's what gives them the ability to file the original lien in the first place. Um, so, you know, whoever uh, basically takes over the house is responsible for those, okay, which is, um, you know, this new buyer that paid, you know, $50,000. Now, of course, he paid off the $15,000, and there was an extra 35,000 to boot uh, on top of that. But um, no, the, um, the property is the security for that. The homeowners, you know, of course, they're gonna lose the house uh, too. So that's not good uh, and everything. So, um, you know, the, uh, um, you know, so basically just kind of be aware of that. So now anyway, with that caveat, um, and we said that they're actually not behind on the mortgage payments. Okay, so that's kind of what is different here that's a problem is you can't do a short sale uh, if you're not behind on the payments. Uh, so, so Reese, basically, um, you know, what you want to do in this situation is, you know, you want to get an ATR authorization to release form signed by for both the mortgage company, even though they're not in a short sale, you can still talk to the law allows you to talk to the lender and get one for the ATR, uh, you know, authorization form for the HOA. Now you got to modify my form, okay? So if you're in the basic workshop or on the um, Facebook group under the, uh, there's a whole section on my ATR form. You're going to have to basically change it from the bank's name to the HOA name of the association, uh, but get authorized to be able to speak with them because 
you know, they don't really want to own the house. They're just trying to scare the homeowner. Okay, so if you can try and work out some kind of deal to postpone that or something like that, um, you know, that's what you want to try to do uh, with it. Um, you know, you don't certainly want to have this go up to a bidding war on the courthouse steps because then people are going to overbid, you know, to, to be able to buy that with it. So what you want to basically do then, Reese, is, you know, contact the bank and you want the bank, uh, you know, to um, pay the HOA fees, okay, uh, with it and mm -hmm. stuff. And so, you know, they, you know, they, they have to look at, you know, okay, so um, what's the value of the house? Um, if they don't pay off the HOA fees, the HOA now owns the house. And then what happens is the bank has to depend on the HOA to do something with it that doesn't trash it, right? Okay, so mm -hmm. if I was a lender, I wouldn't want to pay, um, I think, Reese, didn't you say it's pretty high, like 10, 15,000 for the HOA? Uh, about 15,000. 15, yeah, so the bank is not going to be thrilled about paying 15000 but they have to look at what happens to their collateral if it's owned by a, a disinterested party that is just sitting there, especially if the HOA is stupid and kicks the homeowner out and the homeowner takes the utilities out of his name. Uh, you know, the HOA is not going to want to pay the utilities. Uh, so now the house is going to freeze. So, you know, what you want to try to do is, you know, see if you can get uh, the... Um, the, you know, the lender to pay those HOA fees. Now, of course, the big, you know, thing is, um, let me ask you this. Um, so I kind of want to do this live with Reese. Uh, so Reese, um, does the homeowner want to keep the place or, or do they want to just get out and move away? That's kind of an important uh, destination. What, what's the homeowner want to do? They want to get out and move away. Um, they said that they're pre-approved for a place um, <laughs> and that they've been looking but you know, I don't always believe everything they say. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, they say they're still looking. They said they've looked at a couple of places and no, that's they were actually approved. Actually, a very smart yeah. idea. Um, so you know, um, if you do bankruptcy or foreclosure or those other things, your credit just literally taints. You know, while you're missing some payments or whatever it might be, your credit score is pretty good, and so that's a good time to go out and get you know, pre-approved or to find a, an apartment or another place to live before you get too far down the road. So yeah, then, um, so so I'm gonna say that I'm not a realtor, I'm not an attorney, I'm not an accountant, okay? But, you know, um, what I've seen other people do is they stop making their payment, okay? So I'm not telling you to go tell the homeowner, stop making your payment, but just tell him that the bank uh, will not do a short sale unless you miss a payment. And then if he says okay. I want to do a short sale, then he can make that choice to not make his payment. The only exception to that is if he was moving to another city more than 50 miles. So there's a relocation mm -hmm. uh, variance you can do where they don't have to miss a payment. Um, but other than that, they've got to you know they've got to you know miss one payment. Uh, and so you want to basically contact the bank right now, tell them you want to do a short sale. Uh, and so you know you need to. Uh, you know, get their RMA document request. Um, I don't know, Reese, have you taken the basic workshop or not? Yes. Okay, so in there, there's this RMA form request for mortgage assistance. You wanna get that all filled out and check the box for uh, short sale. And then you wanna get all your realtor documents and turn them in at the same time. Don't give the bank the opportunity to say they're gonna send out their own realtor and list the home. You wanna say, no, wait, We've already got this done. We already have a buyer. We just need you to approve that, okay? Um, and you can actually start that now. Let's say their payment isn't due until uh, December 31st. You can actually do all that paperwork. They can't um, actually um, get approved for the short sale until they miss a payment. So you can start the paperwork and it takes you know mm -hmm. months to do. So if they wanna get out in a hurry, that is a problem uh, with it and stuff. Um, so basically, you know, you want to start that and get that going. Um, and then, um, you know, the HOA, you're just going to have, what I suggest you do is call them, tell them that you're now taking over, that you are selling the house and you will get 100% of your payment, okay, uh, and stuff. And, um, and so that's basically, um, you want to say, hey, you, you worked, it was effective, you scared the sh crap out of that homeowner, you know, he's taking action, 
and he's actually selling the house. They're going to go selling the house. That means that we get our fees. Okay. And then we don't have to pay an attorney. We don't have to file a lien. We don't have to maintain it. We don't have to kick them out. Uh, so you want to point those bad things out to the uh, trustee on the phone uh, and stuff. And, okay. and, and I really wish you were a one-on-one -on -one coaching student because I love with my one-on-one -on -one students to do three-way calls and I get to talk, you know, to the person and stuff like that. But what, what we got to do? To, yeah, I mean, that might be um, ideal, you know, just based on what's in motion. And then the other one with the guy with the chapter 13, so yeah, um, okay, so real quickly yeah go ahead and, and bring that chapter 13 one up real quickly um i forgot the question so if you could restate it he wants to um um uh, well a lot of the questions got answered earlier so i don't have many questions yeah, go ahead go ahead and re-ask it so I, everybody else can hear the benefit of the questions okay so um he's in the chapter 13 and um he's wanting to stay in this in the school district he's wanting to rent he uh, texted me earlier, said that I have any places to rent to him. I told him I didn't. Um, I, um, so that's the plan. When they move from there, I asked him why um, why he doesn't want the place anymore, and he said it's just too much to um, too much house to handle. And um, I don't know where they'll end up going, but when I explained to him the benefits of a short sale, he seemed to. Um, he seemed to gravitate to that. Yeah, so, and, he's, um, so he's currently in a uh, bankruptcy, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's really good because tonight I picked out some recorded phone calls um, because I see that happening a lot more often. Um, you know, people, um, the, you know, the people are going and filing bankruptcy. And the problem is there's not enough people marketing and reaching out to these people. We should be reaching these people before this happens. Okay, before they file bankruptcy. So I've got two or three recorded calls uh, that I'm going to play tonight um, that are exactly how to handle that situation with the homeowner and what you want to tell them. But just real quickly, you know, to re answer your question that people need to be aware of in the bankruptcy, um, you're going to have an authorization form with the bank, the lender originally. But when they go into bankruptcy or if they're already in bankruptcy, you actually have to have an ATR form filled out by the trustee for the bankruptcy. So the seller homeowner will hire a bankruptcy attorney, pay him some money, uh, and then now the court is the legal guardian of the finances of that person. And so now for you to talk to that bank, uh, the bank is going to want you to have that bankruptcy attorney sign the form. So we're originally with the lender, um, you know, the homeowner sign the form and then you can talk to the bank. Now in this particular case, for you to talk to the bank later, you've got to have the um, foreclosing attorney authorize you and say that it's okay. So you're going to replace the name of the seller uh, with the uh, name of the foreclosing attorney. Uh, then that's going to let you go back to the bank and be able to uh, negotiate a short sale. Just know that any approval that you get will require the um, judge uh, to bring it out of bankruptcy. And that document is called uh, 30 day motion for relief of stay, 30 day motion for relief of stay. A stay means stop. A stay is a bankruptcy. Everything stops. Uh, and so you're going to relieve that. You're going to stop stopping, which means you're going to go and proceed with the short sale. So that, uh, and the 30 days means all creditors have 30 days to comment. Now, nobody comments, right? What does a credit card company care about, you know, that there's a, the house going to be released? The credit card has no collateral on anything, so they can't say anything. So there's that 30 day time frame. So don't get the approval letter too quickly. Or, 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 or if you think you're going to get the approval letter, then go to the bankruptcy attorney and say, hey, we're about to get issued approval letter. Please file the 30 day motion for relief of stay so the judge can approve it in 30 days. Um, so that's kind of the, the big things you need to be aware of there. But um, tonight I am going to play. Uh, some phone calls on that uh, tonight uh, with it. Um, let's see if I can figure out the right order uh, for this. Okay, so uh, does anybody have any questions about... Um, uh, hey, David. Yeah, go ahead. It's Michelle. How are you? Hi, Michelle. Hey, um, yeah, so on that relief of stay, does that uh, has, do the, are the homeowners hesitant to do that? 
uh, when they have possibly have other things that are um, pressing for that bankruptcy or and can they resume the bankruptcy once that home is removed from the with that state process? Yeah, the bankruptcy never stops. It's only pulling out one piece of collateral and that's gotcha. the okay. address. So yeah, it doesn't okay. affect the rest of anything else. Um, okay. What you gotta watch out for though, Michelle, is that the bank can actually file the document themselves. Okay. Oh, and, okay. And that's a bad sign. And you wanna <laughs> watch for that because that means they're not being very agreeable in the short sale, right? And, right. Uh, so you better watch for that and kind of double up your effort. You know, maybe you're not going to buy the house for twenty nine thousand six hundred dollars. You may have to pay fifty for it. Okay? okay. So don't you know go to extreme ends sometimes on these with trying to get a really really low price. Uh, okay. Be aware of that. But that's a good question. Okay. Uh, any questions on what we just talked about with his case? Okay. So I am going to. Um, play a recording of this exact scenario. Uh, so Reese, listen well to this or go back and listen to the recordings tomorrow because this is kind of what you want to say to the homeowner. So let me go ahead and okay. uh, this one here um, on it. So this is discussing the options and how to do it. Now keep in mind, um, you know, this is, a sh this is a foreclosure in just like three days, two days time. Uh, with it. And so, you know, we can't get through to the bank for a lot of various reasons. Um, Christmas being one of them, it's hard to reach the bank when most of them are on vacation, right? It sucks this time of year. Um, and so the best option, you know, for this guy in his situation was to, to file bankruptcy. So how do we go about that? So that's what this phone call here is. Uh, you know, basically, let's see, the 16th uh, was on Thursday. Um, and then uh, he was going to file bankruptcy on Friday for a Monday foreclosure. So this is where we're at, a Monday foreclosure, uh, which is today. Uh, whoops. This is Rick. Hey, Rick, it's Guy. I got David on the line with us. Hey, Rick. Hey, uh, sorry. Uh, Hi, David. I'm giving you, sorry, I've been giving you uh, quicker updates. Uh, things are changing so quick that if we did, it would have been different a half hour later. So. Uh, well, so here, uh, you know, we are uh, getting pretty close to uh, the end of time to be able to do something. So I'll wrap up what we are currently doing right now. Uh, we have just been able to uh, get the email accounts for the vice president of the company, okay, Nancy. And so we were able to obtain two email addresses, a supervisor and then a VP. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to send them an email uh, stating that uh, noon today is past. The wire cutoff time has occurred. You're not allowed to close um, on the day of foreclosure, so a payoff letter does no good now. They, they can send it to you, and it's useless because you can't close on a home the day of foreclosure because you wire the money, the deed's not recorded yet, and then the foreclosure happens at noon. So you, in essence, literally lose your money. Uh, now, obviously, the bank has to give it back, but you know, at some point, you know, but right. you know, we would have to close today. That's not going to happen. You know, usually the, well, technically between you and me, Rick, the wire cutoff time is about three o'clock, but we're telling the bank that, you know, it's a Friday and the wire cutoff is noon. We're now past that. You have uh, failed to provide any kind of payoff letter for, and therefore it's your responsibility to postpone for seven days. We're now past the riffraff in the bank of all the supervisors and people, um, and we're able to, Guy was able to get those email addresses uh, from them, and so he's going to send an email stating that, which, you know, they'll look and see, yep, we don't have the payoff letter out, um, and yes, you know, we can postpone for seven days, so that's our hope that they will do that. Um, for you, here's what you need to do when we hang up. You need to, because this is a kind of a longer process, you need to call and, and talk to or interview several bankruptcy attorneys and you need to do this you need to find out can they accommodate what you need half of them are going to say i'm on vacation next week i'm on vacation this week so you just need to find somebody that can even do what you want you know you're going to tell them it's noon on monday and you and they can determine when they need the paperwork you know um, and from you and so you know what you're going to do is let them say okay well if you can come in saturday uh, you know, with the paperwork that I need, 
then I can get it written up, and then Monday morning I'll file it, and we're done. And that's and that's perfect. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that. You know, if they say, well, you can come in on Monday and fill it all out, that's even better because that gives us the rest of today for you to cancel the appointment. Okay. Um, so so you have to just get phone numbers of an interview, if you will, three or four people, and and pray that you know someone's available to do this. You know what I mean? So that's your your first task to do, um, and you know, if the guy says, well, if you come in right now and fill out the paperwork, you probably might want to just go ahead and do that, especially if everybody else is telling you, I'm, you know, you know, I'm, I'm an attorney, I make too much money, I don't work the last two weeks of Christmas, you know, and you can't find someone. So if you're having trouble finding someone, then try to just take the, the first appointment. But, you know, if you can get an appointment on Monday morning and they can do that, then do that one. If not, do Saturday. And then if not, do Friday, but at least call them and set up an appointment time, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, we'll, 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 the email, you know, they'll respond via email, um, you know, that they're going to do it or not do it. Um, and then, you know, we'll know whether you should cancel or not. Can't cancel the appointment with the attorney if you get that email. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that'll give us the rest. So that's why I'm saying a Monday appointment's better for us because it gives us all day today uh, for them to, you know, postpone and send it back. If your bankruptcy guy says, "Well, look, you know, I need you to come in this afternoon," um, then you know we aren't. They may postpone anyway, but you know, we can't take that risk. If your only appointment with one guy. Is this afternoon? We can't take the chance, Rick, that you lose this house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so we, you know, so it's unfortunate that you know you'd have to go through the bankruptcy. We've tried in the past two days as hard as we can to stop it, and we're very close. It's just that this Fay company is not like a big bank, and so they're um, a lot, you know, not as well organized. Actually, is what it comes down to because they're a smaller bank. Or not a bank, they're a smaller servicing company. Um, and so we tried everything so far we can do, and we might pull it out, but I don't want you to take that chance uh, that they screw us, you know, uh, because what if the VP says, you know, I'm, I left early today, you know? Um, you know, we, right. we, with the holidays, we just don't know. I don't want to take that chance and have you lose the house. Okay. So. Okay, I just want to be clear. Uh, contact a, a bankruptcy attorney. Do I tell them I, that I? <clears throat> excuse me. I was working with you guys. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And then we have not been able to get uh, the the payout letter, payoff letter from them. Yes. From the bank, and uh, and uh, you. I've been advised that probably the best way to stop this would be to, to go ahead and and uh, file bankruptcy. Yeah, tell the guy I don't want to lose my house. Right. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Um, you can tell them our names if you want to. Uh, you can tell them everything that you know. There's there's nothing in what you're doing. Uh, now there's, there's some times when you know people are just gaming the system and but you know you know where. Now, anyway, I don't want to get into that. You're not even you're not doing that, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Uh, you know, you're trying to save the house. We're trying to save the house, okay, um, and stuff, and give you those options. You know that you, you know that you want, be it modification, be it a uh, short sale, be it you know finding some rich dude that's going to you know pay for that, overpay for the house, whatever it all comes down to. You need those options, and uh, and so the bankruptcy you know will give you. Uh, that and so yeah, I mean, so the thing is, you couldn't get a payoff letter. You know, we have a full price offer, uh, but the bank won't give us the legal payoff letter to wire it. We don't know where to wire it. You know, I mean, it's not just where to wire it, Rick. It's a legal document because it's where the bank, you know, can't change their mind. So, well, you know, uh, two weeks later, no, wait a minute, you owed us three eighty. You know, we're like, no, right. we didn't. You said on the phone three fourteen. So that's why right. that payoff letter is a legal document. So, you know, we haven't got that, and they won't postpone for seven days either. You know, he, he may say, well, why don't they postpone for seven days? 
just tell the, the bankruptcy guy, <laughs> we tried really hard. They, they won't do it. So, you know, we're out of time. Okay. Um, in the bankruptcy, if that goes through, that goes, it sends it all a different route though, doesn't it? Well, not really. Uh, technically what it, what it just means is that everything stops. The bankruptcy stops the clock, stops time. All bills, all payments, everything stops at that point in time. Nobody can do anything to you. You know, credit card, car companies, um, banks. Can, and so it's just a, a stop to evaluate what are your finances, what can you afford, and then the judge will look at, okay, so he makes this much a month and his payments add up to this a month. So credit card companies, you're out. Okay, you weren't collateralized, you're out of here. So that kind of helps. Then they go to the bank and they say, okay, so a bank, uh, you know, you uh, have collateral. Um, and so, you know, we're going to, you know, tell you that you have to accept less per month than what you were getting before. But the problem with that one is it all accumulates up to what you have to pay at the end of five years. Okay, if you stay on it for five years. So you're going further and further in the hole. It's not going to, help you with a loan mod if you were to do a loan mod. Um, right. you know, loan mod, they literally are forgiving your debt, you know what I'm saying, because they change the interest rate. In a bankruptcy, they actually charge you more. Uh, you just don't pay it monthly. It's, you know, it just keeps accumulating in a larger balance um, and stuff. And that, and that's if you go through with it. You have 30 days to back out. So, you know, not this is probably where I would say don't tell the attorney this. Don't tell them you're going to back out in 30 days. That's that's gaming the system. That's why I said I wasn't going to tell you. You know, um, you know, you don't want to tell the attorney that you know you're going to back out in 30 days. You know, kind of thing. But you can technically. You know, when they, when you go through and you look at, you know, okay, what's going to be the results of all this? You know, that I don't want to do that. Um, now, of course, when that happens, the bank can turn around and start that foreclosure process again. Um, but, you know, by then we can do a short sale, we can do a loan mod, you know, we've got, this gives us lots of time, you know, uh, to do it. Okay. Okay. And David, I don't have your last name. You said give him your names if he asks. Oh, yes. Sorry. I thought I, it was, it's Randolph, R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H. Oh, you did give me that. I'm sorry. I, yeah. yeah. That's all right. Yeah, David Randolph. And uh, let, let me give you my phone number, too, in case he wants to call me. Uh, and everything, um, and it's, you know, and then you can get the bank, bankruptcy attorney. I mean, I work with them all the time. Okay, bankruptcy uh-huh. attorneys uh, and stuff. So they know me, but there's a there's a lot in St. Charles. Um, and so, uh, so uh, can you write down my phone number? Yes. Okay, it's six three six six eight five two nine nine zero. I'm sorry, two nine nine zero or nine seven. Uh, zero two nine nine zero. Okay. Okay. Um, and then and then he'll tell you what he needs, but I can tell you right now what he needs. Um, you know, for you to actually go through with all this is there'll be a, a eighty minute phone call you have to listen to, and you'll get a, a confirmation number at the end. Okay, you can do that any time over the weekend. And he'll also basically need um, like a list of who your creditors are, so it's easiest for you to just take in any car pay stubs any bank statements, any credit card statements, so that he can, you know, put down who your creditors are, you know, on uh-huh. So you will need, you know, some paper. He'll tell you all this, but just so you can get it ready ahead of time, you know, you got to do, you got to do a lot of the same paperwork you got to do for a loan modification or a short sale. So it's ironic that it's actually all the same kind of paperwork, but, you know, he'll need to know, you know, what your pay stubs are, um, which I guess I should ask you that because they're in the well, each state's different. If you make above a certain amount of money, you actually can't do a bankruptcy. How, how much? Do you know how much? How much you make per year? Um, it, well, it's it's taken a hit um, the last couple of years. So I'm I'm under fifty right now, but my my wife wakes about um, about thirty also. So I guess a combined seventy to eighty. Yeah, I think the number in Missouri is 123,000. Um, if you make no, over 123, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're under that. So, okay, so is no. I should have maybe asked that in the beginning. So, hey, guy, make a note in our file that I should be, we should be asking homeowners 
I mean, if they because if they do make more than 123, bankruptcy is not an option. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, okay, but yeah, so that's some of the paperwork. They'll tell you exactly what they need, but just so you can get, you know, uh, prepared and you know, fire it and be ready, you know, then uh, you can do that. But like I said, you know, tell them everything you need to, have them call with any questions, and then try and get okay. a Monday appointment, Saturday or Friday if you have to. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. And any questions, just text or call. Okay. Will do. All right. Thank okay. You, Talk to you later. later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Okay, guys. Um, we're just about out of uh, time here. Um, anybody got any questions on this? Um, what's happened was, you know, we're seeing so many bankruptcies now mixed in with our short sales. Um, and this is just uh, something that I did with my, I've got a monthly membership group and when it's a two hour long and we went through a bunch more other recordings. Uh, we, my, my students, I probably did three or four bankruptcies this past week. Um, but anyway, throw any questions in the chat box. Um, if you got any questions, we'll, otherwise we'll wrap it up for the Christmas holiday season uh, with it. Um, uh, Michelle, you'll have to go back, I guess, and get the recording for the, uh, I did a market update before you came on with the status of uh, short sales and where they went to and stuff like that. But um, you can catch that on the recording uh, with it. Or if you send me your email address or something, I could just bootleg a copy of it to you if you want. Uh, but anyway, Mark, do you have any questions or anything? Otherwise, uh, you know, we are a little bit over on time. We can wrap it up and I'll go have a good Christmas holiday. If you do have a, any question about short sales or anything, just go ahead and feel free to ask me. Um, you know, I'd be glad to answer it. Just throw it in the chat box on it. Um, and stuff. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, happy and you know, Merry Christmas to you too. Uh, okay, well, Michelle, uh, any questions from you? Can you, can you chat, Michelle? Uh, let me look in the question Q and A box. There's nothing in the Q and A box. Um, okay, great. Okay, well, um, like I said, uh, appreciate it, guys. Um, hope you guys have a new have a new year that goes well, and uh, you know, very good Christmas and. Don't drink too much eggnog, I guess, uh, and stuff. And so we will uh, go ahead and uh, end this uh, December uh, 2021 RAI USA Supergroup short sale um, session. And I uh, hope it was useful. Um, I've been having a lot of requests to play recordings. Um, and so I've got a, a membership group where we do two hours of um, bank calls and seller calls. And so RAI USA members have been asking for more of that. Uh, with it. So, um, you know, this is actually off of my uh, Facebook group, uh, Short Sale Profits um, on Facebook, if you're interested in that. But, um, you know, the, uh, the kind of things that we do are, uh, you know, pretty interesting. There's a lot of homeowners in trouble right now. So uh, definitely go out there and reach out to them. So uh, if you ever got any questions, just send me an email. It's David Randolph at RealtyRenovator.com. Uh, you know, text short to 636-685-2990 uh, to get that uh, link to all the websites that you see on the screen that you can't read because they're too small. I can send you a Word file with all these web links. Um, anything else, um, you just let me know. Uh, number is 636-685-2990. Nine zero. Uh, with it. So um, write that down. Uh, send me an email. Um, I also have a, a longer presentation on short sales um, that covers and kind of more A to Z. Um, it's a longer presentation than we normally do on our RIA or a USA group. With it. Um, but anyway, guys, I appreciate it. Um, you guys have a Merry Christmas, and uh, you know we'll see you in the January call. Uh, good night, everybody.